It felt like a really normal Seahawk night tonight. Those were the words of Coach Pete Carroll after the Seahawks beat their NFC West foes, the 49ers, in dominant fashion, 20 to 3. Six sacks from the Legion of Boom. So, gentlemen, how much stock do you put in this win for the Seahawks? Stephen A? Not much, to be quite honest with you, but that's no fault of the Seattle Seahawks. It's that they were going up against a putrid uh, San Francisco 49ers squad who is a shell of itself. Uh, they're not who they used to be, and as a result of it, I mean, I, I can't really get excited uh, about what I saw from Seattle. They did a good job setting up the run using Marshawn Lynch, who had 27 carries for 122 yards, looked like his old self, uh, particularly early in the game sort of setting up play action where Russell Wilson could ultimately hook up for a bomb with Lockett. Excuse me, with Lockett. That set the tone, obviously. And the defense just carried the way. They sacked Colin, uh, Colin Kaepernick six times. They were all over him. He was hitting people on the sidelines more than he was he was hitting guys in the field. His record against the Seattle Seahawks is 1-6. and six. In the past three games against the Seattle Seahawks, the 49ers have been outscored 56-13. to 13. I'm going to repeat that. 56-13, to 13, that means they've scored 13 points in three games. Grand total. That's just pathetic. And then when you look at Colin Kaepernick, Skip Bayless, in those seven games against Seattle, this dude has two touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's only completed 52% of his passes, and he has a quarterback rating of 55.1. That's just pathetic. And at this particular moment in time, we've got to ask ourselves about Colin Kaepernick. I don't know whether it's him and he's simply not that good anymore, or is it the team? Is it the fact that Harbaugh is gone, which I think it primarily is, by the way? Is it that Tom Sula is in over his head? Is it that Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith ain't what they used to be? I don't know what the hell happened. When you look at last night's game, Richard Sherman was on the field defending Torrey Smith, former Baltimore Raven, now with the San Francisco 49ers, just like Anquan Bolden. Torrey Smith was on the field, 42 snaps. Every one of those snaps, Richard Sherman was on him. They targeted him one time. They didn't even throw the ball at Richard Sherman's side of the field. He completely shut down Torrey Smith to the point where even Torrey Smith tweeted, unacceptable that's how bad it was so i don't know how you look at this all i could do is give seattle credit for handling its business and for continuing its level of domination over the san francisco 49ers but whether it's because seattle has arrived or because the 49ers are, were just flat out pathetic it's very difficult for me to tell I'm just going to lean on the pathetic side on the San Francisco 49ers, primarily because a guy named Jed York, who's the, who's, who's the boss of the team, along with G GM Trent Baalke, essentially sold the franchise down the river because of their egos. The fan base has been robbed. 49er fans uh, or, or nationwide have been robbed. This product that we were accustomed to seeing on the field under the Jim Harbaugh era, even when they were mediocre last year, they were 10 times better than what we've seen from them this year in terms of competitiveness. By that virtue alone, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to say I will lean on the 49ers being a tad bit shy of pathetic overall for the season and clearly pathetic last night as the cause to why the Seahawks looked so good. I have faith in them. They're still my Super Bowl pick, Seattle, obviously, but I, this game told me nothing about them. It just told me everything about who they were playing against. And by the way, to your Richard Sherman point, did not you refer yesterday to a story you saw in the Seattle paper? Was I, wasn't that it about... Yep that Richard yes. in just, they were grading cornerbacks, right? And he ranked 82nd so far through the... Well, that was pro, pro football, football focus okay. rated him okay. that. But the article in the Seattle okay, Times pointed to what pro football focus said. Okay, what was it? Like he ranked 82nd, whatever. 82nd, yeah, okay. 82nd, right. just 82nd. Okay, just for the record. So then you, you target the guy he's covering one time. Get that. B before right. I respond to Prim's question, let, I, I want to congratulate your Seahawks that you picked. I was highly impressed that they were able to bounce back emotionally and physically from that debacle in the fourth quarter at home to Cam and company.
just the previous Sunday, just the four days before, I, I was impressed with their effort, their energy, their refocus. They came out much readier to play in this game than the 49ers did. On the flip side, I told you yesterday, I thought the 49ers, who played pretty well in their last three games, including the win last Sunday at home over Baltimore, for what that's worth, I thought they, as an arch rival, could at least hang in this game. They, they had no shot. I, I was dead wrong about that because what, what shocked me was how pathetic their effort was from the first snap of the game. And then, of course, to your point, how pathetically the quarterback performed for the 49ers, Colin Kaepernick. But to start the game off, and Marshawn did have a huge game, big bounce back game, but Stephen A., they, they, it looked like they weren't ready to even try to tackle him in the opening series. And then after that, Colin Kaepernick seemed like his first four passes. I, I don't know what got into him. He, he was throwing balls that were supposed to be aimed at receivers. They weren't, they, they weren't intentional throw it out of bounds kind of passes. He was missing guys by a mile. And I don't know what's happened to Colin Kaepernick because he had played a little better over the last three games. And then finally, Stephen A., what did Colin Kaepernick used to do to defenses? He used to terrorize defenses with his legs. Remember Green Bay in the two playoff games, one at Candlestick, one obviously at Lambeau? Colin Kaepernick ran them, literally ran them off the field with his legs. Again, this is nothing, it's no disrespect to his arm. He's got a huge arm, but he needs his legs to complement his arms. Guess how many running plays they called for Colin Kaepernick last night? Zero? What are you doing? You, you don't even well, let him try? Zero? And then Stephen A., he drops back. He used to kill you with scrambles. Just kill you. And I know he's worked so hard. Be a pocket passer. Stay in the pocket. So he goes back 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, sack. And he's better than that. He's more dangerous than that. He, he never got Seattle's defense on its heels at all. They did not fear his legs for a moment last night. And if you don't, you, you will dominate them. And Seattle got back to being Seattle again. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, let's be clear about something here. What I said yesterday was this. Colin Kaepernick was going to be neutralized because the one thing that Seattle has on defense is speed. That's the one thing that they have. They're not only vicious and they can come at you and they're smart, but they have speed. Sometimes it looks like they're lacking girth, okay? But they never lack speed. So he's going to be a pro they're going to be a problem for somebody like Kaepernick. That's number 1. And number 2, skip, let's just call it what it is. He doesn't look very good. He has looked average or worse this entire season. And here's the reason why. You want to look at it Look, he doesn't really have an excuse. He's the one person that doesn't have an excuse. Vernon Davis might have an excuse because Colin Kaepernick is the quarterback. Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith may have an excuse because Colin Kaepernick's the quarterback. But Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback, has an offensive coordinator in Jeep Christ. I believe that's how you pronounce yep, his name. Right. G-E-E-P. -E 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 no, Jeep Christ. You got it. Well, he was the quarterback's coach. Yeah. So he went from the quarterback's coach to the offensive coordinator. Okay. So whatever it is that he's asking you to do, this isn't some Alex Smith situation where you have different coordinators and, you know, different coaches all over the place and there's no level of continuity. The one person on the San Francisco 49ers who has had continuity is Colin Kaepernick. Jeep Chris was here. He was your quarterback's coach in San Francisco 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. He's been with you since you arrived at San Francisco. So how is it that you have regressed to this point? At some point in time, we're going to have to look at Colin Kaepernick and start to, if we're going to talk about RG3, we got to start talking about this brother. Okay. Because he ain't showing up. All right, He's but sure it's, it, it's the same syndrome. You have to use your legs or be allowed to use your legs. They went one for 11 last night on third down. How did Russell Wilson beat them last night for the most part? With his legs on third down. How many escapes did we well, see? It looked like they had him and they didn't have him. How many times did Russell Wilson run the read option with Marshawn? And it makes Marshawn go true. because there's a, there's a threat that he's going to pull it down and go skip, with it. Skip, skip, forgive 
forgive my ignorance, but I'm just going to say this and I will open myself up in all honesty to your expertise on this because this is just what I feel. I don't believe that a runner can be neutralized from running by his own team. I understand you might not use the read option. I might, I might understand that you may not use play action. I understand plays like that. But when that pressure's coming, Colin Kaepernick used to see it and had not only the speed but the elusivity to get loose and do what he does. S to me, I'm not going to blame Jeep Christ and the San Francisco 49ers for that missing. That, to me, is on Kaepernick. Now, if you RG3 and you're trying to stay in a pocket, in a pocket come hella high water, and you're, you're fixated on that because you had that nasty injury and you're no longer who you are, I understand that. But you can't tell me, Skip, and we'll talk about RG3 a little we bit are. later, but you can't tell me, you can't tell me that without that injury that that guy would not have been on the move. Colin Kaepernick has never suffered no. an injury like that. Okay. So I'm not going to look at the San Francisco 49ers organization and say, well, you know what? They're the reason he's not running. I don't give a damn what play is in there. When you see cats coming at you, and, and you instinctually will start running for your life. Okay, the fact he that he hasn't been, the, the fact that he doesn't do it is because for some reason he doesn't seem to be able to. They seem to have figured him out. They closet him into the pocket. They close the gaps. They keep him and they, and they keep him sandwiched. And he doesn't seem to know what to do, Skip. I don't, I don't That's know. on him. There were two or three That's times last him. night I said, run, just take off. You, you got nothing, go. You, use what God gave you. You, you got a, a huge gift here. And, and again, Jeep, Chris, they, they call no rollouts. They call no read options. There, there's nothing to get him on the move. And by the way, they, they didn't do it against Green Bay either at home. They lost 17 to 3 because they, they don't even threaten Green Bay that doesn't have the speed on defense that, that Seattle but I'm not does. But right. I'm not saying you're wrong about that, Skip. All I'm saying is I'm putting that on him. I'm saying to you, you're right. Just don't tell me that's San Francisco's fault. I think that's his All fault. Right. <laughs> well, Kaepernick certainly wasn't running, but Marshawn Lynch was definitely running, even when he was throwing up in the first half. Did you guys see that? Nonetheless, the Seahawks improved to 3-4, and four, but they are still they under... They want to see it, but I saw it. Yeah, uh, me too. So Seahawks still below 500. All right.